Now, Matthew mentioned the Venus Uranus cycle. That's one of the most popular ones and the most powerful ones in the stock market because Venus makes its pass around Uranus every 225 days. You can take 225, divide it by 365, that's 0.618 of a year. Well, if you have the Venus Uranus cycle doing that, and at the same time you have Mars Uranus, it's also a Fibonacci cycle, all coming together at the same time. It gives you a higher probability uh, that this cycle is going to be, you know, quite powerful. Uh, the Royal Bank of Scotland article uh, that, that talked about the new moons and the full moons um, also talked about some of the planetary things, but only in passing. Um, it, it's really a quite interesting article, and I bring this up because it's on its way, folks. I mean, this stuff is no longer in the closet. Uh, it has a great deal of applicability. It's not 100% by any stretch of the imagination, but it's a real cyclical work that is, uh, that is really quite, uh, quite useful in, in what we do. Now, this I want to show you this one because this is a, the most interesting one. This, if you notice, on March the 6th of 2009, we had all, uh, nine of the ten planets were all in the in the in this area uh, within within two houses of a very close degree. It was only Saturn that was on the other side, and we it was an, an incredible alignment. We hardly ever saw that, and this is what occurred at that particular time. And this is when our Bradley model was telling us that you know the market was getting ready to make a big move. I showed that one you know back there. This is this is when it started. This was the pattern that we were looking at. We had a three drive pattern, drive one, drive two, drive three. And we'll go through these patterns over the next hour and we'll have a pretty good idea uh, of what some of them are and the ratios and, and where they come from. But this is what we're looking for. We're looking for pattern and ratio and then we take some things from the uh, universe that are natural in nature and try to tell us that these are the dates that are most probable. And it's a probability. It's never a certainty. Um, that's why uh, I keep repeating it, but it is in fact the case because you never know whether you're right or wrong. Okay, this happens to be uh, the last one I wanted to show you because it was quite important. If you'll notice in the middle here, uh, there's actually eight uh, conjunctions and oppositions occurring. Those are zero degree and uh, 360 degree. The, the cycles move in 360 degree uh, movements and when they go from one side to the other, that's an opposition at 180 degrees. But actually these are shown as circular but in fact they are elliptical in nature. Just like that Fibonacci spiral that we talked about. These are elliptical, they're not uh, shown but, but, but the classical astrologers use this to show where the aspects are given in fact that they know that they're, they're dealing uh, with an ellipse. Uh, this was the August 15th of 2007. This was a huge bottom. Uh, this was very similar to the bottom of 1982. Uh, it had that many things together. Uh, the 1982 bottom had um, six uh, oppositions and conjunctions present. Uh, the August 15th one had uh, eight. And we made that bottom that day. The Dow was down 350 points that day. And uh, with one hour to go, the Dow was down about 250. And the Russell small cap was uh, actually up on the day. And the NASDAQ was almost unchanged on the day, with the Dow being down several hundred. The S&P was down about 20 handles. And with that day coming in, I said, well, this has got to be it. And so uh, we went long. And uh, it turned out to be a pretty good trade. But this is a, the, the functionality of the, of the cycle dates. They're very accurate and uh, within reason, of course. But it, it was quite spot on of what we were looking for. This happened to be also one of those Venus uh, conjunct uh, Uranus that uh, Matthew mentioned. That's the Fibonacci 0.618 cycle. So we had the big run. Now, we went up and we made a new high. And then we broke this in January after only a five-month period. This cycle of all these planets had never been broken in 230 years. The last time it had been broken uh, was way back in the 1800s. And uh, this is why we've remained bearish uh, you know, for most of the time. And we still, we still bearish. We believe we're going to go a lot lower because this cycle was, was a huge cycle that doesn't happen very often. And uh, we will see if this is correct or not. But uh, it looks like we are headed for uh, much lower prices in stocks based on the work that uh, the work what we do. This is another way of doing the same thing without using any type of astrology at all, just drawing the angles. 
and looking at the patterns geometrically, it's the same way of uh, predicting the same type of thing. The upper right-hand corner, um, this was the high of 1987, which was on August the 25th, was known as harmonic convergence because we had six planets at zero degrees, conjunctions, all in the same house of Leo, and that was the high before the big crash that occurred in October of that year uh, on October the 19th. So you can do the same thing geometrically, or you can do it using uh, the astroharmonic things. You come up with the same type of thing. Now, we're going to talk a tiny bit about Fibonacci here. This is the uh, picture of uh, Leonardo da Vinci's Proportion of Man that's the famous for its codex book. Uh, Bill Gates bought the codex book in 1986 for $20 million, and he gave it to the Smithsonian Institute. It's 1,500 pages of da Vinci's handwritten notes on his inventions of the hyperbaric chamber, the submarine, the airplane. Oh, there's so many things that the man did. It's just, uh, it's really uh, he helicopters. It's just uh, amazing what he did and the things that he talked about in medicine. This particular diagram is an etching where he showed the ratios and proportions of man. And basically what he's doing is he's showing that these ratios and por proportions when you uh, divide one by the other, they come out to the relationship of 0.618. In other words, from your uh, hand to your elbow to your shoulder, that relationship is 0.618. From the top of your head to the pubic crest to your feet is 0.618. Uh, it also works with your fingers, your phalanges and your toes, your metatarsals. They're all related. Now, he wrote about this uh, up here, and, but you'll see that it. the reason why it's called the Codex book is Da Vinci wrote it left-handed into a mirror. So the only way that you could um, read it would be to turn the diagram around and hold it into a mirror and then you would be able to read the Italian inscriptions uh, that are there. That's why it's given the name of the codex book. If you're ever in a big city and the book is there, you should really go and take a look at it because it, it is truly a work of art with the things that he did that were actually, you know, he, he lived in the uh, 16th century so it was really amazing that he did all the things, uh, you know, that he did. And you stop and think you know, what Pythagoras did 2,000 years before, and he didn't have any of the things that uh, they had, you know, 1,500 years later. Um, now, this was done 2,500 uh, B.C. This is from one of the, the uh, chambers of the uh, uh, one of the pharaohs, and it basically shows the same thing that da Vinci was showing, and uh, that the ratios and proportion of the human body are rela related to this spiral, which is nothing more than 1, 3, 5, 8, 13, uh, 21, and it shows that all these relationships come out to 0 0.618, and ratios and proportions of the, of, there you go, your, with your phalanges and also your metatarsals, all these are related to these particular things. Now this diagram is very important right here, because this is basically the diagram for DNA. It's how our molecules line up along this diagram that determines the difference between each one of us. This particular diagram is very important because it is the main reason why there has never been a murder conviction in the state of Arkansas because they have the same DNA. Okay, the first pattern that we're going to talk about, we're going to try, try to take some of this esoteric stuff and turn it into dollars and cents if we can. The ABCD pattern is also known as the lightning bolt pattern. Uh, uh, Gartley was the first man ever to uh, bring it into print. It was in 1937 on page 249 of his book. And uh, I'll show you the pattern. You'll recognize it right away once you see it. But that pattern became very popular. And in, 19, in the 1950s, a man named Franklin Tubbs brought it out at the Tubbs Stock Market course. Uh, Gartley was so uh, enthralled about making people better, he didn't even, didn't even bother to sue him for infringements. He just said, you know, you're going to be able to help some people with this, so go for it. And he did. And then in 1974, Larry Williams and Charles Lindsay came out with the same type of pattern, and they called it the Trident system. Nothing more. Instead of AB equals CD, they called it P1 equal P2, P4. P1, P2, P3, P4 instead of AB equals CD, but it was the same thing. They sold it as a system for $4,000 to a great number of people, uh, one of which was me. 
but I had already knew the pattern because I had found uh, the ABCD pattern in the uh, uh, early 70s, 1971 is when I first found it. And um, it was really, it's, I use it to this day, as, as do many people. There are many, many uh, people that are using it now. And it still works because it's just actually what the market actually does. This is what it looks like. <clears throat> This is the exact diagram coming out of Gartley's book. This is nothing more than an A, B equals C, D equal move. And you determine trend. If you have higher bottoms and higher tops, you're in an uptrend. doesn't make any difference whether you're uh, on a five-minute chart, on a monthly chart, a weekly chart. Look at the time frame because the time frame determines what you determine as trend. If you have higher bottoms, higher tops, you have an uptrend. If you have lower tops and lower bottoms, you have a downtrend. So our job as a pattern recognition trader is to try to determine point C if we want to be a seller, point D if we want to be a buyer, and point E if we want to be a seller. So we're trying to sell higher, uh, excuse me, sell, excuse me, sell lower tops in the downtrend, and in an uptrend, we're trying to buy higher bottoms, and that's what you're. That's the whole pre premise of what the ABCD pattern is all about. In real life, here is the AB equals CD pattern. This one's perfect. This happens to be the dollar yen. I do a lot of Forex trading because it is the greatest trading market that there is. It's a thousand times bigger than the stock market. Uh, it does bounce a little bit on, you know, Bernanke or Terrible Timmy, you know, says something on the news, but not nearly as bad as some of the, you know, the other stocks and stuff. And they're not related to earnings, but it's a tremendous liquid market. It's got so much liquidity that you can throw anything at it, and it's not going to move it very much. But this is a perfect A, B equals C, D, D pattern, where A, B is equal in time, time from down to C, D. It's equal in time, and it's also equal in price. Now, it's not always perfect like this, because point C can sometimes come down very quickly and go past the A, B equals C, D. So you have to have some parameters to look for to tell you what this is about. All I want to show you is what the basic pattern is and that you see it uh, you know, over and over again uh, in the markets. Now what we're going to be dealing with here over the next uh, half hour or so is to just look at the market itself. Now you can do all of this work by using a little handheld calculator, a pencil, and a, and a ruler. That's all you really need. You don't even really need a proportional divider, but it, we're looking at Five numbers, 618 and 786, are contracting numbers. In other words, the market is either pulling down into a retracement area or being pulled up into a resistance area if you're on the downtrend. One is nothing more than AB equals CD. 1.27 and 1.618 are expansions. In other words, the market expands to a new high by 1.27 or expands to 1.618 or expands to a new low by 1.27 or 1.618. And we're just going to take a look at these numbers and just see how, how well they line up. Now this happens to be the euro. This is probably the most actively traded thing in the world. This is the euro versus the US dollar. This happens to be a 30-minute chart over a 10-day period. Now if you take a look at that and never seen anything before about patterns or numbers, you'll say, my god, there's nothing on this chart that even looks symmetrical at all. And so all we're going to do is we're going to click the little button, and there are all the ratios that we just talked about. In other words, the ratio from, from the low to the high to the low rallied back exactly 61%. From the low to the high, it expanded to 1.618. And if you looked at the patterns that were there, you have a, an A, B, C, D pattern here. And the market rallies up again, and it stops right at a 786 of one swing and 618 of another swing. And remember what we said. We determine trend by whether it's a downtrend, lower tops, lower bottoms. This is a downtrend. And all we're doing is we're trying to find A, B, C, D within the context of these swings. And that's what you know really pattern recognition is all about.